This is the classical pose for guitar. Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and do you know what this and techno have in common? Let's talk about it. So guitars and techno, guitars and techno, techno and guitars. I would say that my musical taste on a spectrum from guitars to techno is much more towards techno than towards guitars. <laughs> what I mean is that in the past, whenever I would hear electronic music where guitars are too prominent, especially especially guitar solos, uh, it would be an instant turnoff for me. Uh, it would just not resonate with me. It would take me out of the moment and I would be paying attention to a guitar solo that I don't really want to be paying attention to. So over time, when I started getting into Ableton, every time I saw the word guitar, I would just skip. I would just like, if there was an effect that had the word guitar in it, I would be like, nah, not for me. That doesn't really vibe with me. And I went on my merry little way, making kick drums, making rumbles, all that kind of stuff. But there is one, at least one technique that you absolutely need to know from guitar to make good techno and that is guitar amplifiers guitar amplifiers are these amazing tools that can turn this into this and in techno it can do two things for your music one is stylistically and one is technically stylistically it can make your sounds more punk part of the thing that solidified techno as this kind of countercultural thing was its tendency to overdrive things to drive things to 11 to push things too far so that the machines that were producing the sounds would slowly start to break down a little bit adding color and saturation to your sounds you take a friendly little kick drum and you play it way too loud through your mixing desk so it's playing super in the red and suddenly you get this like the sound that communicates embodiment, violence, resistance, and a rejection of the norms. So stylistically, for example, punk music would really embrace it. It would push everything up to 11 to the point where it's all broken and say, that's my vibe. I want it to be this kind of broken. So if dirt, anger, aggression, resistance are any kind of keywords for your music, guitar amplifiers are a surefire way to get there. And just as an example, you've been hearing me talk like this the whole time. But now I'm putting my voice through some guitar amplifiers and you see how much more punk this is, how much more resistance this has, how much stronger this is stylistically in a certain way. Obviously, if you're looking for delicacy and intimacy, this might not be the route for you. But as always in music, everything is a stylistic choice. So you figure out what emotional things you want to convey. And now the second reason you might want to use guitar amplifiers in your techno is the technical one. And that is to add more character to your mids. When you're in a studio like this, uh, wait, let me show you. When you're in a studio like this, you might be working with big old sound system speakers like these. And the woofers on a thing like this are, I don't even know how many inches, but they're big enough that in this room, it kind of sounds like a club experience. And what separates a club experience from a home listening experience? Well, I would say it's the presence of an enormous amount of sub bass. This system can reproduce sub bass really, really well. And that's those very deep frequencies that hit you in the body. And so when I'm gonna be composing music for the club, I'm gonna be composing something that has very strong punches in the chest, and it's gonna rely very heavily on those sub frequencies. So I can easily make something here that's gonna sound great in a club. However, there's no guarantee that that's actually gonna communicate well on a home listening situation, on a small sound system, where there's not a lot of capability to reproduce those ultra low frequencies. Man, holding this camera is getting heavy, let me put it down. <laughs> All right, so if you're composing something that's supposed to be listenable, both on a club sound system and on a home sound system, you need those low end frequencies to hit in the right way. But then when you switch to a home sound system, you don't want it to sound all thin and clicky because on that home sound system, that big kick might just sound really weak. Here, let me play you something that sounds amazing in my studio. Oh man, the bass on this is fat. It is heavy, sounds amazing in this studio. When I switch from this to a small sound system, it's gonna sound something like this. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, I uh, have trouble describing this as enormous. Uh, this is not very punk. This is not very assertive. This is not very impactful. This doesn't have any body to it. And why is that? Well, the reason that this is the way it is, is because I'm relying so heavily on the sub bass frequencies, which are not reproduced in this situation. So what do I need? Well, I need this kick drum to have more character in the mid frequencies, because right now, you're only hearing the mid frequencies. And so how do we add character to the mid frequencies? Well, guitar amplifiers, that was a solution. So that brings us back to the start of this story where these guys overlap with my techno. Now I'm not a guitar guy, so I don't even own any guitar amps. 
And you know what? <laughs> That's just fine for me. I don't, I'm not going to go out and buy any. Instead, we're just going to go the very convenient route and simulate it in software, right? And it just so happens that the world of guitarists has provided us with some very beautiful emulations of guitar amps. Just to name one, there's the Native Instruments guitar rig. And let's see what that drum pattern sounds like played through this guitar amplifier rig. Yeah, now we're talking. But you might be like, yeah, Oscar, now it sounds really strong in the mids, but now you've lost all the low end and the transient punch, and you've basically completely messed up the sound. Well, yeah, I, ag I agree, I agree. And that is why I would recommend putting it in parallel. And so here you've got the original and you've got the parallel. And so the dry chain here has no effects on it. And this one has the guitar rig on it. And so when I play them both at the same time, so I'll turn this off. This is beautiful and clean and sounds great in my room. But this still has a lot of what I was looking for, plus it has more attitude. It's stylistically also a bit different, of course. And now, when I play on a small speaker, this has a lot of, a lot of content compared to this. This is now clicky and doesn't communicate the power that I was looking for. But this is much closer to what I was looking for in terms of the power that it communicates. So what does that mean for us as techno producers? Well, if you're making a techno rumble, you're gonna be working a lot with those low frequencies, those sub frequencies, and that's awesome. So make sure that you get those low frequencies working how you want. And check out my rumbles video, of course, for the long version of how to do that. But then once you've got that low rumble working, do make sure that it translates as well into the mid frequencies. And using guitar amps is one weapon to get you there. If you want me to do a full video on how to do techno rumbles with these guitar amps, leave a comment below and I'll prioritize it for one of the next weeks. But today I don't have time for that. I gotta keep working on my Foundations Level 2 course. For those of you who have been following the channel for a while now, you know that I've got a course called the Foundations of Electronic Music, where I take absolute beginners into becoming like basically competent intermediate level producers. And now I'm working on a sequel course, which I'm gonna call Foundations Level 2, which is for intermediate level producers who want to take their craft a bit more seriously, who wanna develop a more consistent practice that actually brings them forward, and to offer a whole bunch of new tools and concepts to expand their comfort zone. If that's of any interest to you, do leave a comment below. Join the mailing list for when it's going to come out in a month or two. Let me know if you know of any techno that actually has guitar in it that's actually good, so maybe you can prove me wrong. Come show us on the Discord channel what you did with this, and until next time, stay producing, be good to each other, and take care. Bye-bye.